Oh, yeah. We just have a couple of announcements this morning. Alpha resumes this evening at 6 o'clock. And if you don't know what Alpha is, ask me and I'll tell you. Also, the uh, Open Art Studio, our class is tomorrow evening right here at the church. And we have a women's dinner and if table on the 12th, which is Friday night. If ladies are interested in that, please see 
uh, Janine, if you're interested in attending that. We have a congregational meeting on April 14th, which is next Sunday, right after church. It's just a, sh a short meeting for all members, and attenders are welcome to come and see how we do things as well. There are papers in the back that have the list of the two boards that we are, have to vote on if you're interested in seeing the list. That would be trustees and nominating committee. So that's pretty much it. This is called a bulletin. We, we communicate three different ways. Oh, yes, oh, thank you. Um, so we have bulletins in the back. We have slides at the beginning of the service. And we also have a newsletter that goes out every Thursday afternoon. If you're not receiving that and you would like to, uh, please let us know and we'll get you on the list. That comes out by email. Also, if you're visiting with us this morning, we have these tablets in each pew where you can sign in your name and let us know that you're here. So we'd love to have you do that as well if you would. All right. Glenn is sharing the word with us this morning. And I'd like to invite him to come up and call us to worship. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Let's pray together. Father, as your people, we come here this morning to proclaim your worthiness, to say, great is the Lord our God and worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. And so we bow our hearts to you today, Father. We are grateful that by your grace you have called us to be your people. And we pray your blessing today on our service. We pray your blessing today on Jamie as he's finishing up a week of study leave. We pray your blessing that he, that you would give him a productive time. And we pray, Father, and give you thanks that you care for us. We remember all your benefits. You forgive all of our sins, and you heal all of our diseases. We are grateful to you. We pray now those words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Glenn. Could we all stand together? Sing this great hymn, God All Nature Sings Thy Glory. God All Nature Sings Thy Glory, and Thy works proclaim Thy might. Ordered vastness in the heavens, ordered course of Thy hand in man whom thou hast made for thee. 
Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advanced against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple.
is behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from the grave and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the way of the world and failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin that we may be your faithful people obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rules the world and is head of the church, his body. Amen. And now hear this assurance of pardon taken from Ephesians 2. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come we might know the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Sing 
confessed together now we believe in the Anaiasene Creed, which we do on Communion Sundays. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And we believe in one cat Catholic and Apostolic Church, we acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Could we pray together as the ushers make their way forward? Father, we are so grateful to be together once again this morning, singing praises and worshiping you for truly lord you are worth and worthy of all of our praises lord thank you for these gifts and these ties and these offerings that we take at this time thank you for those who are busy serving in many different aspects of our church lord we look to you to provide for our needs and to fill our hearts as we hear the word of god this morning we pray in jesus name amen
Oh, would you pray with me, please? Father, we come now to hear your word. You've given us your word to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Oh, Father, shine that light now so that we might learn how to live before you with wisdom and faithfulness. We ask your blessing now, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You turn with me to the Psalms. Turn to Psalm number 49. I'm going to read this in a minute. But first, I'm going to tell you a little story. It was about 40 years ago. Can't believe I'm that old. Uh, it was about 40 years ago that I was uh, riding through the South with a pastor. We were headed to a general assembly meeting in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And, uh, you know, you ride through the South, ride through Alabama, and eventually you get to Louisiana. And when, I got to, when we got to Louisiana, I saw a sight that I had never seen before in my life. There were armadillos running around on the roadway running wild. They were along the road, and of course they were running across the road, and uh, some of them didn't make it. And so there were dead armadillos laying in the interstate. And I remember they made a kind of a strange crunching sound when we ran over their carcasses. How can a human being be like a dead armadillo? That's the question I have for us to sort out today. That's what I want to explore with you today. Today, I want to preach to you, Nancy, you'll like this. This is my favorite song. And um, it's a, what Bible experts call a wisdom psalm. It's a psalm that's intended to stretch our thinking and give us wisdom as we journey through life so that we might have the wisdom that God wants to give to us. You ready? Psalm 49. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all you who live in this world, both low and high, rich and poor alike. My mouth will speak words of wisdom. The utterance from my heart will give understanding. I will turn my ear to a proverb. With the harp, I will expound my riddle. Why should I fear when evil days come, when the wicked deceivers surround me, those who trust in their wealth and boast of their great riches? No man can redeem the life of another or give to God a ransom for him. The ransom for a life is costly. No payment is ever enough that he should live on forever and not see decay. For all can see that wise men die, the foolish and the senseless alike perish and leave their wealth to others. Their tombs will remain their houses forever, their dwellings for endless generations. 
though they had named lands after themselves. But man, despite his riches, does not endure. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the fate of those who trust in themselves and of their followers who approve their sayings. Like sheep, they are destined for the grave and death will feed on them. The upright will rule over them in the morning. Their forms will decay in the grave far from their princely mansion. But God will redeem my life from the grave. He will surely take me to himself. Do not be overawed when a man grows rich, when the splendor of his house increases, for he will take nothing with him when he dies. His splendor will not descend with him, though while he lived he counted himself blessed, and men praise you. When you prosper, he will join the generation of his fathers who will never see the light of life. A man who has riches without understanding is like the beasts that perish. As we look at this psalm this morning, I I have to admit that in many ways this is a difficult psalm to preach. It doesn't lay things out in a linear order that we'd like, and it sometimes is repetitive. So this morning I want to try to dissect this psalm and do that with you and look at its various parts in order to ascertain the message that it's giving us. What are the parts of this psalm? Well, the first one is this. This is an important message of universal truth. This is an important message of of universal truth. The psalm begins, Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all who live in this world. This is a message for all of us to hear. It is a universal truth. That means that this message is for you and for me. We need to listen up. We need to pay attention and hear this important message that the psalmist is trying to teach us. Notice that the psalmist goes on to describe a little more who this message is for. It's for the high, both the high and the low, the rich and the poor. It's a message for the highborn and the lowborn, for the powerful and for the needy. It's a communication for both the wealthy and the poor. As the psalmist goes on to show us, this is a message that has been laid on his heart, something personal to him, whereby we may gain understanding. And so it behooves us, I like that word behooves, it behooves us to pay attention and listen up. Let's get the message that this psalm is teaching us. Well, the second part has to do with a question and the various answers that the psalmist gives to the question. The question is this. Why should I fear when evil days come, when the wicked deceivers surround me? Here the psalmist is reminding us of the brokenness of our world. And a lot of that brokenness has to do with the power brokers 
in our world who seem to control things. Think of people like Putin and Xi and Orban and Erdogan. They seem to be controlling things. And it's interesting how the psalmist talks about these power brokers. He describes them in verse 8 as those who trust in themselves and boast of their great riches. Notice they trust in themselves. They do not trust in the Lord. No, they trust in themselves. They trust in their own abilities, in their own status, in their own positions, in their own power, in their own wealth. They are like the people described in Psalm 36, which says, there is no fear of God before their eyes. But that's not all that the psalmist has to say about these people. He describes them in verse 10 as wise men, that is, worldly wise men. And in verse 14, he speaks about their princely mansions. And he speaks again in verse 12 of their riches. In verse 11, he talks about people who had named lands after themselves. Do you get the picture? These are wealthy, powerful people living in luxury. They are people who are esteemed in this world, people who are worldly wise, But the psalmist associates them with evil days. These are not people who care about their neighbors. They don't care about the common good. They are only people who seem to care for themselves and their own well-being and maintaining the power that they have. We can describe these people as powerful, proud, arrogant, boastful, and self-reliant. And in many ways, these people are the people that run the world. Why should I fear these people? Why should I fear? But as the psalmist tells us, these are people who are esteemed by the world. In verse 18, he speaks of how men praise you when you prosper. (laughs) Indeed, they are counted blessed even by themselves. But that's only one side of the picture. The psalmist paints another picture along with this. And he tells us that these are people who will not endure. Their wealth ultimately is useless. As the psalmist tells us no man can redeem the life of another or give God a ransom for him that he should live on forever and not see decay death is a great equalizer the psalmist is telling us When these 
these folks die, they come to nothing. As the psalmist says, wise men die. The foolish and senseless alike perish and leave their wealth to others. It doesn't even matter if they had named lands after themselves. Their tombs will remain their houses forever. Listen to what he says in verse 13. But man, despite his riches, does not endure. He's like the beasts that perish. Here, the psalmist compares the wealthy, powerful, worldly, wise man, the one who is so highly esteemed in this world, to a dead carcass on the side of the road. He may be wealthy and powerful, but he ends up in the same condition as roadkill. Dead, buried, gone. There is no escaping this reality. Like sheep, they are destined. They are destined for the grave, the psalmist tells us. And death will feed on them. Their forms will decay far from their princely mansions. The third part I want us to look at is this. But there is hope for the faithful. But there is hope for the faithful. The psalmist gives us a sense of this hope when he tells us in verse 15, but God will surely redeem my life from the grave. He will surely take me to himself. Wow. Right here in the psalm, we find the two-part hope of those who rest in Jesus. What is that two-part hope? a hope for resurrection from the dead and a hope for heaven when we die. God will redeem our lives from the grave and he will surely take me to himself. The psalmist gives us a distinguishing factor between us and those who wind up being like roadkill. And it's found in the conclusion of this psalm. He encourages us with these words. Do not be overawed when when a man grows rich, when the splendor of his house increases, for he will take nothing with him when he dies. Now, let me just say, this psalm ought to challenge our thinking about wealth, about money. I know how you think about money. It goes like this. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Whatever wealth you accumulate in this world, it's not going with you. Reminds me of a story I heard about some mob boss that died and he gave the order to fill his coffin with a million dollars. So there in front of everybody is this coffin filled with sacks of money.
And after the service, his brother started taking the money out of the coffin, and he wrote a check for a million dollars and put it in the coffin. can't take it with us. The psalmist concludes with these words. A man who has riches without understanding is like the beasts that perish. He's like those dead armadillas we were running over. Here is the distinguishing factor between those who die like roadkill and those that take the Lord that the Lord takes to himself and that distinguishing factor is understanding. A man who has riches without understanding is like the beasts that perish. Understanding is what the Bible calls wisdom. And we should be reminded at this point what the Bible tells us. In Proverbs we read, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. You see, my friends, the Bible always calls us to faith in the living God. The God who sent his Son into the world as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. And it is only through Jesus It is only through Jesus that we have a saving understanding of God. Jesus himself says, Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Yes, my friends, we live in a broken world in which powerful people seem to dominate. But our hope is not in this world. Our hope is not in powerful people. Our hope is in the Lord. Listen to this quote by Elizabeth Elliot. I ran across this the other day and I said, I gotta throw this quote into my sermon. Here's what she says. There is no perfect life. There is no perfect job. There is no perfect childhood. There is no perfect marriage. And there is no perfect set of people who will always do what we expect them to do. What we have is a perfect God who is able to lead us through this imperfect life with unfailing strength, incomparable wisdom, and infinite love. And so, my friends, Let us take comfort in the words of Psalm 147. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Today, the message of the psalmist is telling us that wealth, power, and prestige in this world is ultimately worthless. He is warning us not to die like roadkill. 
He is telling us that there is life beyond the grave. But you need understanding to find it. And the Bible tells us that life is found nowhere else than Jesus Christ. He is the only Savior for sinners like you and me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the wisdom of this psalm today. And we pray that we might grasp this wisdom and live by this wisdom. Lord, that you would prevent us from dying like roadkill. Lord, that you would surely take us to yourself. We long for that day of resurrection, Lord. We pray, come, Lord Jesus. And we bless you and we give you thanks for your goodness in allowing us to hear your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I love serving the Lord's Supper. Let me tell you a dream I had once. This was a while ago, too, but not 40 years ago. It's what? It's not about armadillos. No, it's not about armadillos. I was laying in bed having a fine dream, and I was dreaming I was serving the Lord's Supper And Jesus showed up in the church. And I, being an idiot, I said, Lord, you want to come up and help me serve the Lord's Supper tonight? So Jesus came up and I started to pray. And I started praying and saying, thank you, Lord, that Jesus is with us tonight to help us serve the supper. And when I said that, Jesus started laughing. I mean, hilariously laughing. And I woke up. I said, what was that about? And then I realized that Jesus was laughing because Jesus is always here when we're serving the supper. Jesus is here. That's his promise. When we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, Jesus gives himself to us again. Every time. That's his promise. Now, how are you able to receive Jesus? Some people say, well, I can't be a sinner and receive Jesus. Are you kidding me? Anybody here not a sinner today? Oh, okay. I'm in the right place. So what do you need? Here's what you need. Do you... The Apostle Paul warns us, don't receive this in an unworthy manner. What's an unworthy manner? Without faith. You must have faith to receive Christ in the supper. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. And so, we are to examine our hearts to 
to see if we have that faith. Do you have faith to believe that though our sins may be many, as the song says, his mercy is more. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for giving us your Son. Thank you, Father, for once again giving us your Son today. We pray for these elements that they may once again, by faith, become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and that we might receive him who is sitting by your side in heaven in glory. Oh, Lord Jesus, give yourself to us again today. Feed us. Nourish us with your body and blood, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll do it now. You put that there so I wouldn't clang it, and I clanged it anyway. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord took the bread and he broke it. And we break bread in the Reformed tradition. Why? So that we might see it broken and understand that just as surely as this bread is broken, so surely was Christ's body broken for you and for me. Please hold the elements and we, so that we may partake together. Oh, sorry. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, the Lord took the cup and he gave it to his disciples. Again, please hold the elements so that we may partake together. That same night Jesus took the cup and he said this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for many for the remission of sins drink ye all of it. Would you pray with me? Father, such grace we cannot fully comprehend, but we bow our hearts and offer you our gratitude for your great salvation for us. Thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Glenn. Could we all stand together now?
It's what the Lord has done in me. All together. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the blind say, I can see. It's what the Lord has done. serve the Lord, your God.